Hi, welcome back to Therapy Designs. If you're new to this channel, my name is Kelly and this channel is all about creating print-on-demand designs using Canva. So if that is something that you're interested in learning about, please do stick around. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to create this design right here. This is actually an all-over print sweatshirt. Um, and so I'm gonna show you how you can kind of create this design using Canva and using Printful and uh, kind of show you the mock-up too, which is easy to download from Printful as well. So if you're interested in learning about that, please stick around. And then I've got a lot more Christmas videos coming up so that we can start getting, you know, a lot of things uploaded in advance for Christmas. So let's go ahead and start. So I am on Canva's homepage right here. And to create uh, this Christmas design, what we did is we used a repeating seamless pattern. And so the first thing I want to do is just get a blank square background. So I'm gonna go to custom size here. And for this, I'm gonna choose 4,000 by 4,000 pixels so I have a nice square frame. So here it is. So when we're doing any kind of uh, patterned design, what you're looking for is something called a seamless pattern, which means that you can repeat it over and over again and it'll just all be cohesive. So we're gonna go up to the left-hand side where you see the tabs that say elements, click there. Now what you can do is just search seamless pattern and you can see lots of seamless patterns will come up. You'll probably wanna go to graphics. And so what we have here is just a whole bunch of different graphic seamless patterns. And to kind of show you the way that these would work and hopefully they're actually seamless. If I was to take this watermelon one, for example, if I was to shrink it way down, make it about quarter of the page and then control D is gonna duplicate. I should be able to put it right next to it and it should create a, a cohesive pattern that I could just repeat all over the top, uh, all over. And so top, bottom, all of that, and it should repeat perfectly. You also wanna pick one that's a perfect square. That way you can fill your entire frame. So that's something you're gonna to wanna to look at. So for this one, we're gonna do more of a Christmas pattern. And you know, because we're doing a sweatshirt, a nice, you know, um, ugly sweater style sweatshirt might be fun to do. So what we can do is we can take seamless pattern and I can just go ahead and filter it down even more and go ahead and just put Christmas. So let's see if I get any more Christmas style ones. There's a few. So here's one that has some Christmas trees. So a lot of these do not look Christmassy. There's a snowflake. We can narrow it down even more if I want to and go ahead and put the Christmas in the front. So let's go ahead and put Christmas seamless pattern. Okay, there we go. Christmas seamless pattern. That's gonna give me a lot more. So the order of your words do matter. So if you're having difficulty, change the order. Um, and so now we can do a lot of things. So depending on what you want, you know, there's all sorts of different patterns. Um, now, one issue that people do run into with the repeating patterns is the idea that on Canva, you can't use any of the elements as a standalone. So if I was to just take one of these patterns and put it on something even in a repeating kind of way, technically it's still a standalone. But we can fix that really easy by either adding an element to the pattern or even by overlapping seamless patterns, which you can also do. So for example, if I wanted to overlap a seam seamless pattern, I could take something like this, which is just pretty easy. Boom, make sure it's perfect with the edges and then take another seamless pattern that has more of that blank background and I could put it right over the top like that. And now I would have a brand new seamless pattern just by overlaying two. And so it's really easy to kind of get around that and still be able to make the patterns your own. And so that was my caveat on the seamless patterns. So for this one, I'm thinking, like I said, we're gonna go with sort of a Christmas sweater style. So there's all sorts of ones that you can play with. And I do recommend trying different patterns out and trying different techniques. Um, in fact, if you, you know, download a whole bunch, then you can go and play with different combinations and whatnot and really try to make it your own. So actually what I'm thinking, I might go ahead and do one of these. So this one's kind of cool. It just says Merry Christmas and it's a repeating pattern. I did like that. And I'm gonna add another page because I'm gonna have a few different patterns that I'm gonna wanna work with. So every time I see a pattern that I wanna work with, I'm just gonna add a new page and put it there. 
and so I'll continue to scroll. Um, be aware, you do want a square background, so if you picked something like this, it's not a square, right? And so it wouldn't repeat, oops, it wouldn't repeat properly, so. Um, well, I guess it would if you did a, a transparent back. No, even with a transparent background, it's gonna give you this size. So unless you make your frame the exact same dimensions as the pattern, it really wouldn't work well. So go ahead and still try to stick with that nice square pattern. Now here it came up with some magic recommendations. So I can hit see all. And so here's some cool, um, you know, Christmas patterns that look nice. So these are all sort of that ugly Christmas sweater style patterns. And um, most of these are square. So most of these would work pretty well. And so those are options there. I am looking for one specific one. I like this one right here. And this one has some variations. So this is the one that I wanna go with. So it has variations in red, in white, in, you know, kind of red and green. Um, so lots of different variations of this that I liked. Here's that other one that has kind of the red and green, but it's the same one. And so I might do something more like that, but you can see there's a lot of fun patterns here that I can work with and all of these would look good. And so I do encourage you to play around. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna say, I'm gonna take this one here, pull it out. And I wanna make sure it covers edge to edge. So you don't wanna have any white along the edges because if you have white along the edges it's going to lead to lines in the design so you do need to make sure it's edge to edge and then i also wanted to do this one and again i want to make sure that that is perfectly edge to edge and if it's not covering the edges exactly you might have to make it a tiny bit bigger really small bit bigger just to make sure all of your edges are perfect and so that looks pretty good right there i'm liking these three and so I might just kind of show you using a combination of these. So now I need to do something to make them my own. So first thing I'm gonna do here is I might just put some sparkles on here. Um, and so that would be easy to do too and it doesn't even need to be an exact pattern depending on how I do it. But let's go ahead and put, let's say maybe sparkle and put seamless pattern and see what comes up. And so lots of different sparkles little things you can add. I'm looking for something that has that sort of see-through background like this, where it would just sort of go over the top. And so here are some little sparkles kind of that you could do going right over the top like that. And I'm not super fond of that one. That's a little bit big, but something similar to that. So I'm just gonna kind of keep looking until I find what I want. I could also do something like snowflakes or stars. How about snowflake? Snowflake seamless pattern. And so here's some snowflake ones that might look good. Um, I do need something that allows me to change the color. I'm thinking I wanna go somewhere in sort of a goldish tone. So I'm trying to get a little bit gold, maybe somewhere there. Let's see how this one looks with the snowflakes. So these snowflakes are a little big. They do kind of wash out the letters. So I'm just gonna kind of keep looking. Um, there's some cool ones here too that uh, have the snowflakes in the buffalo plaid. I do like those a lot as well. So lots of options. Okay, so this is the one I decided to go with. It's just got some little bright sparkly um, kind of stars and they're gold, but they're, they're light. It kind of blends in. And what it's going to do is one, cause this to be an individual design because now it's no longer, um, just one map, um, sorry, just one pattern. It's also going to help me tie some of the gold in. So if, if for example, I throw some gold into both of these, then it will kind of tie back in. So depending on how you want to do that. So for this one, you could do something similar by putting a whole mask over it, but I don't think that would look very good with this pattern. So I'm not gonna do that style. For this one, what I'm gonna do is add an individual element in um, that would just go ahead and repeat as the pattern repeats. And so one way we can do that, which would be very simple, would just be to put something like a little snowflake kind of right here in this area over the tree. Now you would have to do it here, and then we would have to put half of it here and half of it here to still create that seamless pattern look, but that's probably the easiest way to do it. So again, if I'm searching my elements, 
I'm on my recently used, so I did go through and use a bunch. I think the one that I liked though was this snowflake right here because it was nice and simple. You do need something simple so that it kind of goes with the overall look of the pattern. And because I'm gonna shrink it down really small, I did need it to be something that's so simple that it would be very easy to see if it was small. I'm just gonna line that up so it's right over the Christmas tree and kind of decide how high I wanna make it. So somewhere there looks pretty good, I like that. Let's go ahead and change the color now of the snowflake from black to, I'm gonna do the gold color here. Now the center is a little bit more gold than that, so I'm gonna use my eyedropper feature and pick the color right off of the center, boom, of one of these um, little sparkles. And there I've got my gold. Um, now, if you wanna make sure everything's lined up right, you can use the rulers and guides. If you don't know how to get those, you can go to the top where it says file. Um, and if you come to view settings and then you can hit show rulers and guides, you can also just put shift R on your keyboard and it will pull up those rulers and guides. And that makes it really easy to make sure that things are lined up. So if I wanna make sure like the Christmas tree is lined up pretty good with that snowflake there, I can just use this line and yeah, it looks pretty nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick with that right there. Now what I'm also gonna do, I'm gonna zoom in so I can see this a little bit better is I'm now gonna duplicate this because I want it to be exactly the same size. I'm just gonna click on it, hit Control D, that's gonna duplicate it. And then I'm gonna move it all the way over to the side. I wanna make sure that it's lined up and so you should get some guides there that'll show you that it's lined up with the other one. And it's gonna go there. Now this Christmas tree isn't quite cut perfectly in half, by the way. It's a little bit wider here and a little bit narrower here. So what I need to do is actually move this snowflake over so that that little bottom piece here is cut off. And then I'm gonna do it again and I'm gonna move this one, hold on, Control D, bring this one over, make sure it's lined up like that. And now I'm gonna move this one to the right so that you can see the bottom of the snowflake there. Nice, and so that should actually line up pretty perfect. And so I like the way that that looks and that's all perfect. And so then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna repeat the same thing down here and just put that gold snow, um, snowflake right here, right here and right here. And I can of course keep it the same size, click on it, hit Control D and I can just drag it from one page right down onto the other and just do exactly the same thing here so I can make sure that it's more or less lined up with the top of the tree. Now I'm just using the arrows on my keyboard, the right, left, up and down to kind of move this snowflake one pixel at a time to make sure it's lined up where I like it. So if you're having trouble with your mouse getting something exact, using the arrows on the keyboard is a really good option for you. I hit Control D again and I'm gonna repeat the same thing. I wanna make sure that that's lined up top and bottom. And then I'm going to adjust this just to barely cut off that bottom part of the snowflake there. And then do it one more time, Control D, bring it over here. I'm gonna use my arrows, I'm gonna move it slightly to the right. That way we can see the bottom of the snowflake lined up perfectly there. All right, so that is all there is to this canvas section. So right now I've got some seamless patterns. I showed you how to make them your own by layering seamless patterns or by just adding an element to seamless patterns and making sure that that element you know, continues to flow. Um, and so now that I've got some patterns to work with, I'm just gonna go ahead and save each one of these individually. So I'm gonna start with this first one and it just says Merry Christmas and I'm just gonna put pattern. And so I'm gonna download this. Now I don't need a transparent background, I do want this nice white background. So all I have to do is select the one that I want. So I'm gonna do this one at a time. So I'm gonna start with page one and I'm gonna download that one. And then I'm just gonna move on. So then the next one is going to be Christmas, I'll put Christmas sweater red pattern. So Christmas, oops. 
So once I got it titled Christmas Sweater Run 1 Pattern, I'm gonna go ahead, download this one. Again, I just need to pick the page that I want and hit download, and then we'll just do it one more time for the white one. And now because this is gonna be a repeating pattern, the size is really fine because it's not gonna get blown up very big because it's just gonna be repeating. If I did need to blow this up big to put it on a blanket or something large and I really wanted to make sure it was big, all I'd have to do is come here where it says size and right now it's set at one. If I was to move that size over to let's say 1.25 or even 1.5, it's gonna increase the size of, of your design. So now it would be 6,000 pixels by 6,000 pixels, for example. And so that is how you would make it bigger if you wanted to put it on a blanket or whatnot. But for now, one is fine. I'm gonna save this and then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna jump over to Printful which right here, so I'm on Printful's homepage. Now I've had people ask me before why I choose Printful over, um, I think it's Printify. And the honest answer is just, I started using Printful first. I liked it, so I stuck with it. There are pros and cons to both platforms. And if you're doing a shop like on Etsy, there's no reason why you couldn't integrate both platforms with your shop. So you may say, hey, I'm gonna use Printful to sell you know, XYZ products, but I'm gonna use Printify to sell ABC products because, you know, they each have different price points and, and whatnot and different products to offer. And so you can definitely utilize both of them. There's no reason why you have to pick just one, but I am happy with Printful, so I do tend to stick with that one the most. So here, what I'm gonna do is I am going to create a product template for you so you can kind of see what I'm gonna do. So if I come to product templates here, and I create a custom product. What I'm looking for for this is gonna be a seamless sweatshirt. So I went to men's clothing and I'm gonna to go to sweatshirts. And then you can search through the different types of sweatshirts. And right here, we've got one that is an all over print. And so this one, $27, it's not you know that bad in price. Um, and it's shipped in the United States, so that's good if you're making one for the United States. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this. And by the way, this technique works for all, all over print products. So I'm showing you on a sweatshirt because hey, Christmas is coming up, but I mean, you could do this for any all over print um, product that you like. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just click drop your design here and we're gonna upload some designs. So when you hit upload, file, it should pull up your downloads. You should be able to pick the download that you just created and upload it. And I'm gonna do that for all three of the ones that we just made. Good, and so now I have all three of the ones that I just made. Now you don't have to use three, you don't even have to use two, you can just use one. I'm just gonna show you so that you can see the different options um, in terms of sort of the placement on the product. So I'm gonna start off with uh, the white one here and we'll go ahead and hit apply. So now it has gone ahead and put this inside of the front of the sweatshirt. And so you can see the placement right here on the front of the sweatshirt. Now this would be really big if I left it by myself. I don't wanna do that. So what I'm gonna end up doing is shrinking it pretty far down. So you can just take the corner and shrink it in. Now, if left alone, you would just end up with a square in the middle of the sweatshirt and that wouldn't look very good. So if you come up to the top here, there's a little box that says pattern. You can click there and then you can select different pattern types. Because this is a seamless pattern, we wanna use the block and it's going to create that seamless pattern for you. And then you can just sort of line this up wherever you think it looks best. So something like that, or if you want you know, the reindeer to kind of come across the chest more there, that might look really good. And so I think that's actually probably gonna look best. And so that would just be you know, the front. And now you can see how small we went ahead and made this. So we made it 12.66 uh, and 12.69. You wanna pay attention to this because you're gonna want them all to be pretty uniform or at least uniform front and back. If you're doing the same pattern on all areas, you definitely want it to be uniform in size. Um, and so that's one thing you have to pay attention to. And then it'll tell you your print quality and it's good because I shrunk it down. When it was filling the entire thing, it was kind of average, but as we shrink it down, the print quality gets better because it's, it's you know smaller. So now we're gonna go ahead and this is the front, we're gonna do the back. Now I'm gonna show you how you can do the back with 
a different pattern so you can see how that would look. So I'm gonna pick this other one here. Still white, and we're gonna repeat the process. I'm gonna shrink it down. And what I wanna do is shrink it down to the same size, which was, and I can go back and forth if I'm not sure. It was what, around 1265. I can always go back and forth just to make sure. 1266 back. 12, 6, 5. So it's pretty close right there. So then we can go ahead, pattern it, same pattern, and there you go. So now that looks pretty cool in size. Then we're going to go ahead and do the sleeves. So again, this could all be one pattern. I'm deciding to make it three different patterns just to kind of show you, but you know, however you like to do it. Again, we're going to go ahead and shrink this way down to about the same size. Let's see if I can get anywhere close to that 1265. Sometimes I can't get exactly. And we're gonna go ahead, pattern, block pattern right there. And that looks pretty good. Now there is a spot here that says spacing. You want your spacing to be at zero, which means that the patterns are, you know, touching each other and you don't have any lines or separation. If you put spacing there, what you would have is a separation between each of these blocks and you would just have white lines and stripes going through. So you don't want that unless you're doing it for some very creative purpose. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and again, place this where I think it's gonna look the best. And sometimes you're gonna have to check out your mock-up to see how that'll look. So let's go ahead and say, I'm gonna do this right here and I've sort of got that diamond layer right at the top. So now I'm going to do the same thing with the left sleeve, 1254. And one more time here, I'm going to add design. I'm going to do the red one again. I'm going to pattern it again and I'm going to shrink it down again to approximately 1254. Perfect. And then I'm gonna go ahead and place it again approximately where it was on the other one, which was somewhere around right there. Okay. So now that I've got all areas filled out, I can show you what it's gonna look like on a mock-up view. So if you come to the top here, this is design view that we're on here. I'm gonna go to where it says mock-up view. And so it will show you some mock-ups you can, um, pick the stitches, we're gonna go with white. And so here is your mock-up view. And so it's showing you from different angles. So you can see kind of, here is what it looks like from the front with the white pattern and then the red arms. If I wanted to see the same thing from the back, here it is with the other pattern and the red arms. Again, you could make this all one pattern, so you can do it however you want, but I did wanna show you how you could do each of the individual pieces and have them all line up. And so that is how you would go ahead and, and do this. Of course, this pattern, again, it would work for any all over print technique. You just have to make sure that they're about the same size and play with them to make sure everything lines up the way that you want. But otherwise, it's pretty easy, pretty straightforward. So there is that pattern right there. Everything looks kind of nice. It definitely gives that ugly sweater design. And because I put that little you know, snowflake in there and it's repeating just like that, technically this is its own design. Nobody else would have this exact design unless they also did the exact same snowflake in the exact same spot. And of course, because I combined different patterns Hopefully nobody else would have the same combination of patterns either. So um, just by you know doing the sleeves one color and the body another color or another pattern, you're creating a you know unique product or you know unique uh, design style. And so there it is from the back as well. And so now that you've seen kind of how to do that, I can go ahead and save this template. And really quick, I'll show you how you could go ahead and easily get a mock-up of this. So I'm gonna hit a uh, little three boxes, uh, three little dots here, scroll down to download mock-ups. I'm just gonna pick basic mock-up here. Now you could do different types of mock-ups. If this is meant for either a girl or a guy, I would not do a mock-up with a girl or a guy wearing it because, uh, and I've said this once before, I think, 
If it's meant for a girl or a guy and I use a mock-up of a guy, then a girl's probably not going to want to wear it because they're going to think it's a guy's. If I use a mock-up of a girl, then the guys probably aren't going to wear it because they're going to think it's a girl's sweater. So by doing just a regular flat mock-up, um, it, it's easier if you're doing something that's more unisex. And so just, you know, keep that in mind. If you're doing something that is meant for more for a girl, then you can definitely use the model photos or something meant for a guy, you can definitely use the model photos. Um, but if it is more unisex, you probably want to go more with just these, the, the flat mock-ups. They're going to be a little bit easier to work with. If you're doing something like your Etsy shop, I would probably use the flat mock-up as my main image. And then I would go ahead and add a mock-up of both a girl and a guy wearing it just so that they could see the cut because sometimes you want to see how it's going to fit on a girl or fit on a guy. So I would add those in as well, but my main image would still be just the flat mock-up there. And now sometimes they'll have holiday mock-ups. So for example, here they do have a holiday season mock-up that I could go with. Um, you can make your own or you can use theirs or you can take theirs and you can embellish upon it. Um, so we're just going to go ahead, stick with this holiday one. You've got two options with sort of the white backgrounds or the kind of more wood looking backgrounds. I like the wood looking background better. I do want a front and a back because in this case my front and my back are different. So um, if you were doing something like that, you would want to show both sides of it. Now here you can pick um, PNG or, or, or JPEG. I'm gonna go ahead and just go with the JPEG here because I don't need a transparent background. If I wanted to do something like just that and I wanted to put it on my own background, then I would have to do a PNG with a transparent background to create my own mock-up. In this case, I'm gonna use this mock-up. So JPEG is easy and it's you know small and fast. So you click generate mock-ups. It will take a second to process and then it will pop back up and it'll say download mock-up. So then you have to hit download. Perfect. Now, if you download more than one, so I have two right here, it's gonna put in a zip file. If you only download one, then you don't have to do anything. But if you download more than one, it's in a zip file. You're gonna have to go to your, your download tab and then you're gonna have to open the zip file on your computer and then pick each individual file and drag it individually into your downloads. And that's how you can go ahead and get that. And so now what I could do is jump back over to Canva. So, oops, here I am. Here's my, um, here's my mock-up right here. And so you can see that's the mock-up that we downloaded that I showed you to begin with. This is already a nice Christmassy looking mock-up. I don't have to do anything to it, but if I wanted to, I could add some holly, I could add some mistletoe, I could add some snow or whatever I wanted to kind of fluff up the mock-up anyway you know, just to kind of make it original. But by itself, I think this is a good mock-up. So this is probably just the one that I would go with for this. Um, if you have any questions about this, drop it in the comments section below. I know this is kind of a long video. I tried to go into detail about the different ways that you can do this. The best thing you can do is just play with it. Um, it's gonna take a little bit of, of playing with to kind of figure out what patterns work and what goes good and what doesn't go good. But once you get the hang of it, it's pretty easy and you can throw a lot of different products up, you know, on your Etsy shop or you can do it on Amazon if you're through uh, Seller Central. And so, um, you know, go ahead and branch out so you don't just, again, you don't just wanna do t-shirts. You wanna go ahead and try to get as many products and as many product types across as many markets and across as many platforms as you can. The more you have up, the more chances you have of making sales and making money. So definitely, you know, don't be afraid to branch out to other areas. Um, I hope you guys are doing well with your sales. I hope you are doing well with, you know, your, fourth quarter designs. Remember, you have to get everything up early. If somebody wants to wear a, a Christmas shirt, they're probably going to start wearing it at the end of November, which means that they need to order it, you know, maybe mid-November, which means you want to have it up, you know, by late October at the latest. Um, I would say try to get a lot of Christmas designs up this month. So try to get most of your Christmas designs up before October. Um, and that goes with everything else too. Try to get everything up before October because all the quarter four sales are pretty much gonna start late September, early October. So you really wanna make sure you get everything up in advance. Um, I think that's all I wanted to say about that. I do have a lot of Christmas videos coming up. I think I've got a whole month of different Christmas style designs that you guys can do. 
Um, if there's anything else you want to see, drop it in the comment section below. I can try to add you to my list. Um, if I can try to make it Christmassy, I'll incorporate it. Otherwise, I might have to wait a little bit. Um, but I try to get back to everybody as quickly as I can. Sorry for the rambling. Hope you guys are doing good and I hope to see you guys again. That's it for today's video. If you found this useful and would like to see more videos with helpful tips and tricks, be sure to hit like and subscribe and turn on your notifications so you don't miss any of the weekly videos. As always, keep growing and stay creative and we'll see you next time.